Hope you're doing well. Just wanted to give a little bit of a quick update here on a couple earthquakes that happened in the New Madrid, New Madrid, however you want to say it, uh, near the fault zone that exists here within the Midwest. It just so happens to be due south of where I live in St. Louis. So the first thing I'm going to do here is just zoom in on the area and then filter on <clears throat> only quakes that have been registered within the viewing area here. And we'll find that there was a 4.0 that the USGS has designated as a significant quake. Anything in red ends up being considered a significant quake, either based upon the various characteristics of the earthquake or the felt reports or a combination of the two. And I was watching a video earlier this morning uh, by Mary Greeley. Many of you may be familiar with Mary and her work reporting seismic stuff. She was saying she thinks that this is man-made uh, and she was also reporting that there were no aftershocks or foreshocks, but I will say I did notice that as well. And again, the USGS comes in and retroactively adds seismic events. So this event that occurred within an hour of the 4.0, this was not reported initially. I didn't even see it this morning when I uh, first check the map and and then it appeared a little later so just an interesting bit of info there <clears throat> uh, but it, as it relates to the man-made aspect of this I'll dive into that in just a moment but to give you all a little bit of background about the the fault zone here that exists essentially right where Arkansas Tennessee Kentucky Illinois and Missouri come together, the new Madrid, New Madrid fault zone. It's as laid out very clearly by the USGS. If we come down here and select the US hazard map, and I, I wish I would have shown this in my previous video where I talked about the San Andreas and the New Madrid, uh, and how this is actually a more unstable area here in the Midwest compared to what's on the coast. <clears throat> and we can see the activity that occurred is just on kind of right in between uh, the outer rings of the hazard zone and where we get into the depths. So right here, south of Sykeston, oops. The, if you zoom in too far, the hazard layer disappears. But just to give you an idea, we've got Sykeston right here and then New Madrid, New Madrid, just south. And then if we zoom out a little bit, we can see that the most unstable, the highest risk aspect or portion of this area sits right west of New Madrid, New Madrid, sorry. I'm just gonna keep saying it both ways forever. Um, and then just to put that into perspective over here on the west coast very clearly identifiable fault line that essentially runs all the way from pacific northwest down to the southern portion of california but if you look at the most extreme and dangerous parts of this hazard zone none of them uh, reach a, an area of magnitude on their fault scale, that hazard scale, that compares to what we see in the Midwest. All right, so now that we know where the fault zone is, I don't want to get into it now, but there were major earthquakes in the 1800s. Common misconception, it was just one earthquake, but it was actually a series of huge earthquakes that actually had an, such an impact that it forced the Mississippi River to flow backwards for a time and it was catastrophic at the time in the 1800s so one can only imagine how much infrastructure has been built up over the past 200 years which 
would now be impacted if a major quake were to occur. One of the things that I noticed here, if we switch over to the satellite layer, uh, Mary was talking about how she thinks it's man-made because of some of the signatures that are appearing on the seismographs. They look like uh, some sort of activity that is not natural. And I actually commented and requested that she release a new video that goes into the analysis, uh, the comparison, and the contrast between a natural earthquake and one that she believes is man-made because she's kind of making a lot of assumptions with what she says and she'll say she's going out on a limb and then say that it's definitely man-made. Look, I'm not going to refute that, but she's not really providing much data to support what she says. You know, she'll point out a couple things that she thinks are suspicious, but uh, I'm just, I want more information. I want more data in order to back up those claims. With that said, when I look at the satellite layer here, <clears throat> we can see a bunch of pads. And these look fairly similar to what you would see in a drilling operation. And they're just kind of scattered all throughout this area. Uh, so what I did, you can't really see much detail here. This is about as, this is as far as the zoom is going to go. But if I, if I go over to Google Earth, let me just grab the coordinates of this quake. Do a search and it will drop us down to that location. So this imagery is from 2020, as we can see. There are some of those pads that exist. It doesn't seem like there's as many, but when we zoom in, I don't know, I don't really see any sort of indication of drilling. Maybe they're preparing for drilling and doing some experimental operations down there, but I have not been able to spot anything that looks like it's related to a drilling operation. Maybe you have, or you have better imagery and you can comment back here, but yeah, I don't know. Um, whenever I hear someone talking about a man-made earthquake or it being influenced by the activities of humans, it kind of piques my interest and I want to know why they think that and I want to see the data to support the claim. So we will, we'll see. I don't know if Mary's going to respond or release another video, but it would definitely clear up a lot of doubt because I know there's a lot of people who think it's just complete nonsense. But obviously there is science and data to support fracking and drilling related seismic activity. And I don't know, maybe what we're seeing here is an indication of the start of that activity in this region. You can definitely uh, use the, the historical feature here, the historical imagery within Google Earth to go back and look to see what it was like previously and how long these pads have been here. So feel free to do that. I Honestly, I'm always going to encourage everyone to replicate what I'm doing in order to prove to themselves that what I'm saying is accurate. Like if I can't present to you a method that I'm using to convey my research, then you should definitely question everything that I'm doing. <laughs> I'll be the first to admit that question anyone who claims to be any sort of authority for anything. And if they can't favorably answer your questions, uh, I mean, that's just shady. Anyone who's confident in what they're doing and doesn't have something to hide should be able to easily put forth the evidence and the methodology and let anyone reproduce it. I mean, it's, it's really simple. So there you go. I mean, it's not a whole lot of meat on this bone here, but it could be the start of someone doing some research to uncover something 
And yeah, I, I mean, I hope this is at least a little helpful and kind of get some people thinking about what's going on or what may be going on. <clears throat> it's just controversial topics, controversial claims, extreme claims. All of that requires extreme evidence in order to really drive a point home and prove the claims are actually true or rooted in something that could be true. Anyway, hope you have a great day. Stay safe. Peace.